Hey, there you go. Um, so, first of all, um, good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, many thanks to everybody who uh, helped to make, make that happen. Uh, I'm Rafael Wysotsky. I've been around for quite a while. This is my first kernel recipes conference, <laughs> so I'm kind of glad I made it to this venue. Next year will be too late, so yeah, nice. Uh, I, uh, I, since 2009, I've been maintaining a few uh, subsystems in the Linux kernel. Uh, one of them is the CPU idle time management subsystem that I'm going to talk about today. And as a maintainer, I do things like, uh, uh, like responding to problem reports from users uh, regarding various you know, things that, that don't work. I, uh, I address those problems and that sometimes leads to some interesting developments like the one I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so, but before I get to the point, let me, let me give you some background. Uh, so first off, this is about CPUs, but uh, CPUs as, as seen by the CPU scheduler, which means that they are logical CPUs. What that means is they don't need to be, uh, they don't need to be uh, independent uh, autonomous entities. Uh, so here are three cases uh, in the diagram. So uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, the sequence of, of boxes on the left hand side of each um, in each case is is memory uh, the colored boxes are memory cells uh, or, or memory locations holding CPU instructions uh, the arrows the arrows mean uh, mean um, fetching instructions from memory so the first case uh, on your right is, is, is the most simple one, is the CPU that on, which only has one core, and it, 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 or a processor that, that only has one core, it's the CPU, it, it fetches instructions from one sequence uh, at a time and executes them. The second case is, is two dual, dual core CPUs, uh, dual core uh, processor, two CPUs in it, uh, each of them is, is autonomous. It can fetch instructions from memory independent of each other uh, and, uh, and execute them. So this processor can actually execute two programs in parallel with each other. Uh, and every core is a CPU in that case. So the last case on the, on the, on the, on the uh, far right hand side is, uh, is where the CPUs actually are not uh, independent. So there are two cores in one processor. Each core has, uh, each core can actually fetch instructions from two sequences in the, in the same time frame. Uh, and for that, it exposes interfaces called hardware threads or in, in, the, in the case of Intel processor processors, uh, they are referred to as hyperthreads, uh, and they look like CPUs to the kernel, but they actually are interfaces for a single core. So the, uh, the situation is that the core, the, this core and that core can actually uh, fetch two sequences of, inst of instructions or follow two sequences of instructions, uh, and, and, and the CPUs are just interfaces for that. Uh, but the CPU scheduler in this case sees four CPUs, even though there are only two cores that are independent. And that's the, the same thing applies to the uh, idle time management subsystem. Okay, so CPUs can be busy or idle as illustrated by those photos. Okay, so the question to the audience, what does it mean for a CPU to be idle in Linux? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. So what does it mean? What? Yeah, the CPU, the CPU is idle if, if there are no tasks to run on it. Okay? 
no tasks to run on it. It doesn't mean that the CPU doesn't, uh, is not executing code. It, there are no tasks to run, run on it. Or more precisely, there, 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 are, uh, there are multiple scheduling classes in the kernel. So if, uh, if there are no tasks in any of the scheduling classes except for the special idle class to run on the CPU, then the CPU is regarded as idle. Uh, and if the CPU is idle, it can be put into a state in which it doesn't do anything, it doesn't fetch instructions from, from memory, or it, it, and it doesn't execute them. But the hardware has to support that. If the hardware doesn't support such a state, then I, I, idle CPUs have to execute instructions in, in, in a loop, more or less useless instructions in a loop. If the hardware supports putting CPUs into, putting processors or CPUs into idle states, then uh, it, that is an opportunity to reduce power of, of the processor, uh, or, and also it is an opportunity to, to save energy at the same time, okay? So this illustrates what happens when, uh, when the, uh, the CPU core uh, becomes idle and it, and it goes into a, into a special idle state where it doesn't do anything, or in which it doesn't do anything. Uh, but of course, this, this, this applies to cores and, and the entire processors or packages because the, the hardware threads I, I was talking about before, uh, if they go idle or, or if they are put into idle states, for them it only means that they stall and do nothing and, and just wait there. But if, the, if all the hardware threads in a single core uh, are in such a state, then the core can, can be put into, into an idle state. And that allows uh, power to be reduced. And what happens then, which is illustrated by this graph, is that the power goes up initially a bit, like, oops, sorry, like here, right? The power goes up initially in the preparation for the other steps. Then it goes down as the, as the core turns off or, or uh, power gates or clock gates or just reduces the clock frequency for, for its internal units. And then it gets into, into, into a target state uh, over here and it stays there. And that, that's the target idle state. So the, the power, power level here is much lower than the power level in the beginning. And then the, the, there is a wake up usually by an interrupt uh, and then uh, in reverse, sort of, uh, the internal units of, of the core are powered up, and then the, the power stabilizes at the final level, which doesn't need to be the same as the, as the initial one. So there are two things here. So first of all, there are these two uh, entry and exit um, periods or, or intervals needed to go into, into the target state and out of it. Um, and usually, when, this, when, the, uh, when the core uh, started to go into, into the idle state, it has to get there. So that part cannot be interrupted. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, when it, when it got there, it has to go out, so this, this part is also necessary. So the two things here are always there, and they add, add to the latency for the CPU to, to, to be able to execute instructions again, right? So if I, if I was running a program on the CPU here, and then it went idle, then uh, the times for going to the idle state and back uh, are the worst case latency for the CPU to, to be able to execute instructions again. So this is one, uh, one parameter of an idle state, which is the worst case wake up latency. And of course, the, 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 the period in which the, the, the CPU is in the idle state or the core is in the idle state is referred to as, as, as idle residency. And there is a minimum, minimum time uh, for, uh, for the core to be in that state uh, so that it can save any energy at all. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's in the idle state for, for a shorter time, it, it won't save any energy. It will just 
uh, just use more energy than than uh, compared to, to, to a different idle state or maybe even to the running state. So there is a minimum residency for for the for the core to uh, for the core to stay in the idle states in the idle state so that it is uh, worth to put the core into that state. And that, that's that's a second parameter of an idle state. It is, it is the name of it is target residency in the kernel. Okay, there's more to it. So that is specifically for Intel hardware. Uh, there may be a hierarchy of, of uh, functional units in a processor. So uh, again, there may be hardware threads, like there are eight of those here, uh, within four cores in this example, and there is a package that contains all of that. Every level of the hierarchy can go into, into idle states of its own, and the rule of thumb is that the deeper, deeper levels, or the, the, uh, the levels that are like uh, bigger, can save more energy by, by going into idle states, because they can turn, turn off more things. They can reduce power by, by, a, by a greater uh, amount. So it always is, is uh, it always is beneficial to, uh, to, if possible, to uh, to, to uh, put the deeper levels of the hierarchy into idle states if there is nothing to do on the on the on all the CPUs in this uh, in this uh, in this processor, for example. So on Intel hardware, uh, the, the M weight instruction is a way to tell the processor that the given CPU, the given logical CPU is idle, and then, and then it can be put into an idle state. Uh, the hint parameter tells the processor how deep it can, it can go with the uh, power re reduction, and that hint affects all of the levels of the hierarchy. So it can, it, it says how far the cores can go and how far the package can go with, with, the, uh, with the reduction of, of power and uh, say uh, C2, like here, means that the core uh, containing this hardware thread can go into, uh, into C2 idle state for the core and the package containing all of it can go into, into its own C2 state. Uh, obviously this is subject to coordination so uh, the, the, the shallowest of all of the requests for, for all of the hardware threads in this example wins. So the, um, this core can go into C2, but the package can also only go to C2 even though, uh, even though the other cores uh, are in deeper idle states. All right, so any questions to this part? So far, okay, no questions. So to summarize, we have for for uh, for all the idle states, we have two parameters. There's a target residency, and there is a, a worst case wake up latency, and there may be a hierarchy of of idle states for a processor, and it is always beneficial to be able to use idle states in a deep levels in in package or cluster levels of the hierarchy, because that allows us to reduce power by, by a greater amount. Okay, so the kernel has, has code to deal with that, and this is the, basically the entire uh, uh, CPU idle time management subsystem. Uh, obviously, the CPU scheduler is the first part of the kernel to notice that the CPU is idle because it sees that, that there are no tax, tasks to run on the CPU. Okay, so the scheduler starts this. And this, this is run in, in the context of a so-called idle task, so this is a special task to run this uh, idle time management code. And there are two steps in every iteration of the task. Actually, three, I should say, but uh, 
this is a high level view, so there are two steps illustrated in it. Uh, the first one is to estimate how much time the CPU will be idle, and then uh, to select the, the, the state for it, or to, or, or to select the, the M weight hint for, uh, on Intel hardware to select, to, 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 to figure out which M weight hint to use. Uh, right? And this is done by the, by the code module called the governor, or idle governor. There are two idle governors in the kernel today. Uh, one is called menu, the other is called letter. Uh, they are used in different cases. I, I will get back to that. And then when the idle state is selected, by the way, the, this, the governor is independent of the hardware. Okay, so the governor, uh, all of the idle, the, all of the, uh, all of the uh, list of idle states available is abstracted in such a way that the governor can work with it, uh, regardless of what uh, hardware is. And, and the, the CPU is actually put into the, into the idle state by a driver. And there are two drivers for Intel hardware. One is, one is Intel idle and the other is ACPI idle. They work sort of differently in the, depending on the case. And, uh, and they basically, on modern processors, they, they both execute the MIT instruction for, to enter, to, to, to tell the processor that this, that this uh, logical CPU is idle. Yeah, well, but not at runtime today. Actually, it is, so, yeah. Uh, usually it is done at the kernel build time depending on the configuration, tickless versus tickful. Uh, but the, it, there, there is a uh, command line, uh, a command line parameter that if you use it, then it will allow you to, uh, to choose the governor at runtime. But this is racy, so be careful. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. I, I, there is a plan to improve it, so we are, we, we would like to get rid of this uh, ugly command line thing, but uh, okay, so that, that's the high level view of it. But there's one complication in it. Uh, so this is, this is very straightforward enough, right? They, you know, CPU is idle, uh, choose a state, enter it, wake up, uh, check if the CPU is still idle and repeat. But there is a scheduler tick timer. The scheduler tick timer is a, is a periodic timer run by the CPU scheduler uh, in order to implement this, the time sharing strategy. Obviously, if you, if you are going to run uh, multiple, multiple tasks on the same CPU in the same time frame, the only way to do it is to, you know, to distribute the CPU time between them. And, the, uh, and obviously, also, tasks may not voluntarily uh, stop or, or, or go to sleep or something. So they, there needs to be a, a way to get the CPU uh, you know, from this task and give it to, an, to another one. Uh, and the scheduler tick is the, is the mechanism that, that is basically for that. That's the purpose of, the main purpose of it. It does multiple other things, but, but uh, most importantly is, is to uh, implement the time sharing it is there to implement the time sharing. Okay, so, but also it interferes with the, with the idle time management. Now the second quiz, what's the problem with the scheduler tick versus the idle time management? It is a periodic timer, right? Yeah, so if it, if it, if it is allow, allowed to run, to, to always run, then you may not be able to use the deepest idle states I was talking about because it will wake up the CPU too often. So there, there is, it, basically, it obviously interferes with, with all of that. Uh, and there needs to be a way to, to work around it. Obviously there is because the uh, scheduler tick is for implementing the time sharing strategy, right? But if the CPU is idle, then by definition, there are no tasks to run on it, okay? If there are no tasks to run on it, the time sharing is not necessary. 
So the scheduler tick is not necessary, so you can stop it when the CPU is idle. Well, that's what was implemented, and it was before, uh, so this is for the kernel, for, for kernels 4.16 and older, in, it changed in 4.17, because of the problems reported by users, obviously. But, the, so okay, so th this is a more detailed view on, on, of the, of the um, CPU idle time management subsystem. And what happened was that the scheduler tick was stopped up front. <coughs> then, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the loop, then we checked if the CPU was idle then or, or it needed to be rescheduled. Uh, and then all the code I was talking about was run. And the interrupts just wake up and then uh, the, there is the next iteration of the loop. So yeah, if the scheduler tick was stopped before, or, you know, before starting to execute the idle loop, then the problem went away because the, it was not running and, and the CPU could stay in, a, in, a, in an idle state like for, for a long time without, without the interference with the tick, without being woken up by the tick. But it turned out that this was problematic and why, why, why it was problematic? So can anyone see why that could be problematic? Uh, maybe because you stop the, the tick before you know if you're going to go into idle. Uh, yeah, so exactly. So the tick was stopped up front and what if the governor decided that, oh, this, the idle time will be short? And if, if he decided that the idle time will be shorter than a tick period, then there are two cases. Either it doesn't make sense to, to stop the tick at all, because it, 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 it just, there will be another event that will wake up the CPU before the tick happens. Or if the, if the, uh, governor mispredicted, it will choose a shell state anyway, and then the, 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 there's no tick and there's no other events to wake it up, so it will stay in the shell state for a long time, and that also is wrong because, or, or not, or suboptimal, because it could use a deeper state in principle. So if the, governors, if the governor predicts uh, a short idle duration, it doesn't make sense to stop the tick. You can look at that from, the, from sort of the game theory perspective and draw a table like that. So uh, the, predicted, uh, the predicted idle duration is in, the, uh, is, is in the vertical. So rows are predicted and columns are actual, so, which is what happened really. And you can see here that if the, if the, if the governor predicted short idle, uh, we actually lose regardless of, what, of, of whether the prediction was accurate or not. And that's not good, right? That's not good. Um, again, there's more to it. There are governors. So, and that was regardless of what the governor was, I wasn't even talking about the governor yet. The governor can make it worse. And the reason why the governor can make it worse is because the governor has a fundamental problem, which is that uh, it, it basically it has two sources of information. One source of information it has is the next timer event, which is, which is deterministic. Because the kernel has programmed the timer to fire at a specific time, and the kernel knows what time it, it will fire at. However, there are other interrupts, non-timer interrupts that also wake up the CPU. There are things like uh, uh, memory writes to, to certain locations that will wake up CPUs from idle states. So there are events that are not, uh, that, that are not predictable. 
and the governor has, take, ha, has to take uh, all of that into account. It has to take the predictable, the deterministic information into account and the, and the non-predictable, uh, non-deterministic information into account. So this is like in this photo, actually this is an illustration of this problem. So the uh, uh, springs in the fountain are, are actually deterministic. You can't see it, but they go up and down in, in predictable sequences and, and you, can, you can determine uh, when they go up, when they go down, and so on. The kid is not predictable. You just decided to, to run through the fountain at this particular moment, and you can't really figure out if this, if this is going to happen or not. And that's a governor problem. And here comes the menu governor, which is used on the systems in, in which the scheduler tick is stopped before entering the idle loop, which are referred to as, as tickless systems. They use the menu governor. The, the letter governor I was talking about is used on the systems which don't stop the scheduler tick up front, at least as a rule. So this is the menu governor, and this is a simplified diagram of it. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. Okay, a simplified diagram. And basically, I draw it in order to, uh, to, to show you two things. So first of all, it uses the next time or event information here. Uh, but not directly. It, it uses it to, the, to, to figure out or to determine the, the, the range or the, the, uh, the, the time frame of the, uh, of, of the idle time. There are several bins, like for a short idle, the next bin is very short, the, next, the, the first bin is very short, the next one is, is longer, the, the second next one is a bit longer than the previous one, so on. So it, it uses the, the next time or event to select a bin uh, from which it will take the statistics in order to uh, predict the idle duration. Now, the, another factor it takes into account is this, utilization information. And from that, it takes, uh, it, uh, it, figure, it figures out the latency limit for the idle state. So it, it limits the, uh, it, it won't use idle states which are, which, for which the, the, um, the worst case, the worst case wake up latency is too long. And that is determined using the, the CPU utilization information from the scheduler. And, um, okay, the, the way the statistics, the statistics are collected are obviously when the CPU has been woken up, there is this previous uh, idle duration that, that was measured. It, it's a measured number. We know how much time the CPU was idle before. That goes into, into the statistics and uh, into the bin that was selected uh, for, uh, using the next timer. And unfortunately, the way the statistics, the statistics are collected here mixes up timers with the other interrupts. So even though the timer, the next timer event is, is by, in principle, uh, it is uh, deterministic in principle, it goes, it, it actually is taken into account through the statistics. Which means that the statistics include the timer, uh, timer patterns and the patterns of the other interrupts. It doesn't make sense to include timer patterns in, them, in there, but that, that's, a, that's a, a different problem. Uh, what, what is a problem if, if, that, if, there, if there is a series of timers which are short, you know, with, with short intervals between them, that will be reflected, reflected in the statistics, and that will influence the decision of the governor made next time, even though it knows what the next timer event is. So by having a few timers one by one with short intervals in, at, at one, at one, you know, in, in one time frame, you can trigger the governor to predict idle, short idle duration sometime in the future, even though it knows that the next timer event is, is far away in the future. 
also this mechanism here causes, generally causes the governor to, to prefer short idle. Obviously, because it, it will skip it will skip the states that that, that have uh, too much exit latency, so they, it will prefer short idle. So in general, the menu governor prefers short idle over long idle, which means that it amplifies the problem I was talking about, right? Because it, it is more likely to predict short idle than long idle. Right. So what can you do about that? You could try to change the governor. But really, the problem is in the, in, 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 in the basic design of the idle loop. And the problem is that the, the scheduler tick is stopped too early. Right? You should do something to stop it later. And that's what was done in, in 417. We just changed the main idle loop. Uh, and today, in 417 and later, it looks like this. So instead of stopping the tick here, we let the governor run. And we let the governor decide whether or not to stop the tick. The governor, the governor predicts a certain idle duration. So the governor knows whether or not it, make, it, it makes sense to stop the tick. So the governor actually decides. And now, if the governor decides to stop the tick, then yeah, we, we'll, we'll try to stop it. And if not, it will not be stopped, and, uh, and, and, and the CPU will enter a shallow idle state without stopping the tick. And the tick, in this case, uh, either, you know, and then if short idle is predicted, then either, either, either there is another event that would w w wake up the CPU uh, anyway, right, regardless of the tick, or the selected idle state is shallow. So we need an extra safety net in case there are no other events than the tick. So the tick, in this case, is a safety net for, for waking up the CPU from a shallow idle state. Well, the, it is easier said than done because the, the governor had to be changed uh, in order to implement this, and now the question is, why did we need to change the governor? Okay, the reason why we, we, we had to change the governor was because the governor needs the next timer event information in order to select the bin I was talking about, right? The, all of the computation, but Unless we stop the tick up front, we don't really know what the next timer event is. Because if we stop the tick, then the next timer event is the, is, is the first other non-tick timer, which may be sometime in the future. But if we don't stop the tick, the next timer event may be the tick. So there are two cases, right? And, and the, the governor has to take both of them at the same time uh, into, into consideration. The, the tick, stop tick, case and the, and the running tick case. And it has to, you know, in all the computations, and it has to decide which case to choose from. And obviously it will know which, which case it, it chose, so it will know what to do. But, it, but the, the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, no hertz code had to be changed in order to provide the governor with, with the information of uh, with, with, with the, uh, with the uh, uh, next timer event time with and without the tick, because they may be different. But okay, we did that. And now the, the table I was uh, talking about changes into something like this. So if the short idle is predicted and short idle is actually, actually happens, we win because we, we, we didn't stop the tick and it didn't make sense to stop the tick. Good. If short idle is predicted and long idle is, and the CPU is idle for a long time, the tick is a safety net. I was talking about that, right, already. So the tick will like wake up the CPU from, a shell, from the shallow state it is in 
and, and the next iteration of the idle loop will have a chance to, to choose a deeper state for it. So this is sort of neutral. We don't win, but we don't lose. Obviously, the case when long idle is predicted and short idle happens is a loss, but uh, we can't do much about this, except for changing the governor. But Okay, so that's it. So now we can see uh, the impact of this change. It, in theory, it looks like it could improve something, right? But in practice, uh, the green line is before the change, and this is idle time. So the, 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 the graphs are for, for different servers based on Intel CPUs or Intel processors in the Intel uh, Server Power Lab, uh, Intel OTC Server Power Lab. Uh, and, uh, and this is, all of them were entirely idle when, the, when these measurements were made. So they didn't run anything except for the usual accounting you know, stuff and, and instrumentation and things like that. So the green line is, is before the change and the red line is after. So sorry for the small font. Uh, this is probably, probably the most interesting case. So the, this is 200 watts. And this is a power floor for this processor, okay, for this system, 200 watts, okay? <coughs> so from zero to 200. And after the change, we actually can get the, uh, the, 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 the system can idle at, at its power floor. But before it, it was, it drove much more power than before. The, this is the average running power, by the way, sorry. So you can see that there is a lot of difference in idle power just because of this change of the ISCQ idle time management subsystem. Uh, more data. From different systems. You s there are just different times, uh, different scales at the, at the uh, on the vertical axis, but you can you can ask, okay, so what's what's the why why uh, what's the reason why the the, the the difference is so dramatic, just because we we um, we decided to avoid stopping the uh, scheduler tick up front, and uh, and we did the uh, sort of analysis of that, but this is. Uh, this is an illustration of what really happens. So before we, okay, so every blue dot in the graph on your left-hand side is a single measurement of power. Uh, the green line is the, uh, the green line is the uh, running average power before the change, and the red line, which is not visible, because you know it is included in this blue thing, is uh, is the average power uh, after the change, R uh, average uh, running average power after the change. The graph on your right hand side is the same thing after uh, after the change. I'm oh, sorry, the, uh, there's no red line here. Actually, the, the the graph on your right hand side is, 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 is after the change. And the, and the scale is different, so this is 300 and this is 300. So the, actually this, this is, the, is this line. So what really happens is that the stopping the tick up front uh, causes the jitter to appear. And the jitter uh, all of the all of the jitter uh, of all of the uh, you know the random uh, power values measured uh, are triggered by instrumentation on that system. Instrumentation that you periodically check uh, what happens right in 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 a, in a few different ways. And all of that causes the, those timer series that I was talking about to appear 
and they trigger a menu governor to predict short idle, and then the problem is triggered. So by, by changing the ordering of the idle loop, we actually can eliminate that jitter and, and, and reduce the, uh, the idle power by a lot. On this particular system, on other systems, it differs, obviously. And of course, this is just idle. The other workloads uh, are also affected this way or another. Uh, usually, or typically, what happens is the, uh, is the power is reduced by, a far, by, by far, and the performance may drop a little because of that. But in some cases, the performance actually improves. All right. So that's all I had. And uh, questions? Okay, no questions. Yeah. <laughs> Awake enough. Uh, thank you so much. Quick question. How does this affect any of your architectures? All the work that you've done, does anyone benefit? Is it Intel specific? Any... No, it is not Intel specific. So the changes were, uh, were in the governor and in, in, the, in the outer idle loop, which is architecture independent. It, so Intel, Intel processors benefit the most probably because they, there are the number of available idle idle configurations of them is significantly larger than for other architectures. So we have much more choice for the governor. But the problem is, the problem was independent of the governor and independent of the driver. Uh, and so it, uh, it, it also benefits ARM in, in particular. And what was the original driver? You mentioned that at the beginning, but then you showed power usage as the way that you measured that then. Was that a side effect or was that something you were planning all along to reduce how much consumption? The idle power was a side effect. Yeah. Really, the, uh, so actually the, 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 there were two, two reasons to make, the, to make the changes. So one reason was that people were complaining, uh, actually I could go back to the, um, People were, were complaining by, uh, f uh, about two things. So the first one was the if, if you stop the tick up front and uh, the, 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 the governor predicts short idle and, and uh, uh, idle duration really turns out to be short, then it, was, it, it didn't make sense to stop the tick. And this is a huge overhead because programming the hardware, I mean the timer hardware is expensive. So people were complaining about that originally for something like a few years. But nobody had an idea how to deal with that, really. But last year, people started to complain about the other case, right. which is the, which is the, uh, the, 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 which is this case where uh, short idle is predicted, but the idle time is actually turns out to be long. In which case, the CPU stays for a long time in this idle state, this shallow idle state. So this was discovered or described by the researchers from the universe, Technical University of Dresden. They wrote this, uh, uh, a paper on it, it was published in a journal, and they coined a, a term to call it, and they called it power nightmares. Because, you know, for the sleep in a wrong state, something like that, power nightmares. So, and th this was the trigger for, for uh, for, uh, for uh, making the changes because we, we, we thought, we, what we realized was that, okay, so we have, we have two different problems which can be addressed in the same way. And that, that's the reason. Uh, did you make a study of the difference of repartition into the C states before and after? Did it show that uh, the processor is about to be more sleepy? Uh, because you are less waking up the processor, but does it, slop, does it sleep more deeper? 
Uh, yeah, in, in a bit deeper, yes. But uh, let me get back to this. So, so the, the reason why the idle idle power is is lower than, after the change is because of this jitter. Because the uh, the governor can be triggered into selecting uh, into selecting short idle uh, by a sequence of timers, and that and if instrumentations uses timers a lot. Then, uh, then the sequences of timers happen quite often, right? And, and every sequence of timers with, with short intervals between them causes the, the menu governor to select a short, to, to predict short idle duration and, 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 and basically to mispredict. So this is, this is the main reason. So in, it will, so to answer your question, yes, it will predict uh, short idle less often today, but it will be more accurate at that at the same time. Okay, so it will predict longer uh, idle durations, but it doesn't mean that the, the CPU will, will actually sleep for a, yeah, well, okay, in some cases, if the governor mispredicts and it predicts short idle and, and the CPU is going to be idle for a long time, the tick will wake it up. So yeah, it, it, you can say that yeah, it will, it, it, it actually will even sleep shorter on the average, I think. It will sleep shorter on the average because, because the, in some cases the, the scheduler tick will wake the CPU up. Okay, in the, today, before it wouldn't. So, so generally speaking, the idle, uh, the, the idle uh, periods of the CPU will be shorter on average, but, uh, but that allows you to avoid spending too much time in, in shallow idle states. Could we imagine that uh, this part could influence the HZ value? Maybe trying to slow down the ticks to avoid, it, it, it does recognize the tick is maybe. Yeah, I actually, I think so, but I can't really tell you anything about that in, in terms of like, uh, in, in terms of data, uh, because I, I don't have any. So, but I, I, I think it can, yeah. Thank you. So, you showed us some results for big systems. Um, I suppose a lot of people care about laptops. Did you measure if um, battery life was improved with this new algorithm? It, it didn't, so because the, the uh, you know, usually laptops don't run that much instrumentation. So it doesn't affect them that much. So the problem doesn't affect them that much. If you have, the, so it is possible to, to, uh, to design a workload that will demonstrate a problem, to trigger the problem on purpose. Mm. And if you have a workload that, like that, or, or an equivalent one, then yes, it will affect your system a lot. But if you run a usual workload, then you won't see it. Uh, we can see the impact of misprediction in the governor in terms of um, power consumption, but are there any impact in terms of, um, let's say, latency and performances, or is it totally invisible? Well, this, this shouldn't affect latency, I would say, because the, the um, yeah, it shouldn't affect latency because the, uh, the, uh, the latency depends on what, the, what state was selected and, and not when the wake up happens. So it will, it may affect actually the, so it should uh, reduce the, the, the impact of governor misprediction quite a bit. But otherwise, the latency should not be affected, I think. Uh, except for, again, except for, if you if you avoided to stop the tick and you didn't st uh, need, need to stop it in in the first place, this is the case where, where it helps. But but the, this, these are the very short idle durations only. So if you are on the very short idle uh, edge, then yeah, that it, it can help. Can you go to the table thing? 
Yeah. This one or that? Yes, it's the same. <laughs> okay. Either. <laughs> so if you would have to put percentages on how frequently the various cases happen. Uh, oh, no, I can't. So it really depends on the workload. Really depends. No, for the workload that uh, the benefits. Idle? For the idle duration? For the idle duration with the instrumentation. Uh, with the instrumentation. So, no. We, we didn't do that, <laughs> but, but, my, uh, but you, know, you can figure out from, from the graph here that uh, actually, in this case, it is mostly uh, long idle. Uh, long idle is predicted in, in, the, uh, in, in the majority of cases, but in this case, the, 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 there are a lot of mispredictions of short idle. So. But yeah, I, that's a good point. <laughs> we could measure that. <laughs> Didn't think about it. All right, I think we can wrap up. Thanks a lot. <laughs>